I think it's due that I take you through my entire workflow for processing images. Today, we're going to do the importing and the organization piece. And then next time we'll go into the edits. So I put my SD card into my computer and I just use the import feature found inside of on one. I think it's so powerful that you can import your images and then modify them to get there. All you have to do is click on file and then go to import from device. One thing I will point out for on one, if you have photos that you've already imported from the SD card that you're working off of, you'll get this little arrow. And that just means that it's already been imported. So you don't need to worry about importing that image again. However, if you have never imported the file, like these files of the individuals on the bikes here, you can see that there's no arrow next to it. So what I'm going to do, and you know, you'll have to find your images, you'll click on the first image that you want to import. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of this list now, all the way down here to the very last image. I'm going to hold the shift key and then click the last image that selects all of the images. Now, all I have to do is click one of the circles and it's now selected all of the photos that I highlighted by hitting the shift click option. These are the ones with the check marks. If your photo has a check mark, then that means it's going to be imported into on one. Now we'll come over here to the right pane. Right now I have this going to my photo drive, my personal work, and it's going to macro work. Well, the last time I imported, I was working in macro photography, but this time I'm actually going to import this to my events photography folder. In order to do that, you have to click the drop down arrow and then click on choose location. It's going to bring up my finder and I'm just going to navigate to my events folder. And that is up here in my photography, scroll down and it's right here. And I'm not going to actually select a subfolder inside of here because on one allows us to generate a subfolder by selecting this button right now it's selected and I turned it off. Now it's back on where it says put into subfolder. I'm just going to rename this JT SD bike race. And that's just the name of the event, uh, Jim Thorpe sports days. So now I get the option to rename the file. Now these particular files down here, they do me no good. Uh, the, the file name, right? This is straight out of camera. The problem that I have is I shot raw plus JPEG. So I need the images to be right next to each other. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to figure out that this image is associated with this image down the line because there's a lot of similar photos in the group. So what I'm going to do is leave the rename off and allow uh, on one to import the files with the name that they have. Now you can add in your own uh, keywords during import. So I'm going to go JTSD and then bike race and outdoor. That'll be good for now. Obviously I'm the author and I'm not going to worry about a copyright on there. Uh, that's all good. So that's adding in the metadata. Now you can add way more metadata should you choose to, uh, but I'm not going to worry about that. And then of course, uh, if you want to apply settings to the photos as you are importing them, you can do that by selecting this option, but I'm also not going to worry about that. What I will do very briefly is show you the renaming. I'm going to click on rename and we'll expand that. So that way you can see what you have here. And this is actually one of the powerful things uh, that you you can use, which are the tokens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to metadata camera, and you can see there are a multitude of options when it comes to the metadata, the camera, and just all of the things that you could include during import. Now I mentioned earlier the file name. Well, if I want to keep this file name associated with the name, the rename of the file, I can do that by clicking file name and that's going to keep it at the front there. You can see it has that 3v7a which really doesn't do me any good. So what I like to do is leave the file name there and I'm going to rename this something that I can use. So jtsd underscore bike grace underscore the file name. What that's going to do is give a sequence like this but it's going to keep the name of the file 
in there so I can do what I need to do with it later. Now that I have that all set, I can go ahead and hit import. But before I do that, let's look at a few more options. Uh, maybe you want to have the date and time associated with your file name. In order to associate the date and time, you just hover over the date and time token and then you can select the format that you want. And if you wanted to add a sequence number, let's say you didn't really care to keep all of the files uh, with their original naming convention, you can hit the sequence number option and change the name to JTSD bike race underscore and then choose one of these sequence options uh, and it'll just number all of your images so that way they stay in some organized format. And then we already looked at the metadata, but maybe you want to know what camera you shot. So if you're shooting multiple cameras, uh, this would be extremely helpful for wedding photographers. Maybe you have a main body and an alternate body and you do a certain type of shot on your main body that you wouldn't do on your alternate body. And if you want to find those photos faster, you can just add that to the file name. So when you sort a particular folder that you're working out of during the culling process, maybe you can find those. That That's just an option. There's tons of ways that you could come up with your method. I'd love to hear what you would like to do in the comment section below uh, or what you're already doing. But for me, I'm going to leave it set just the way it is and I'm going to hit import. Now, on one's going to think for a second, it created that folder and now it's starting to dump all of those images into that folder. So here you can see that on one is importing the raw and the JPEG with the file name right next to each other. It's just changing what type of file. So it's easy easier for me to figure out if I am editing the raw file where the JPEG is or vice versa, which I personally in large events like this, I edit the JPEG and when I hit limitations, then I move to the raw file. But knowing where that raw file is, is extremely helpful. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comment section.